Swine influenza is a virus um, that affects the respiratory system of horses as well as mules and donkeys, so all equids actually. Um, and it is a flu virus just like we can get, dogs can get. Fortunately, it's a different strain than what people get, dogs get, or what birds get. Um, so we don't need to be scared of it like people are of some other flu strains. Um, and how it is transmitted is from horse to horse, primarily in droplets when they cough or from nasal discharge. It can also be spread by things, so fomites, people, tack, that sort of thing. Fortunately, it's not an especially stable virus. Uh, so when it ends up on things, it usually doesn't live for more than two to three days. So really the, the main means of transmission is, is from horse to horse through droplets uh, when they cough. So really the most common sign is just a fever. Uh, most horses will develop a fever somewhere between two to four days after exposure to the virus. Um, and they can be some pretty high and pretty scary fevers. So about 106 degrees is, is certainly possible with influenza. Um, and again, that generally happens somewhere in the two to four day. A lot of horses will develop a second fever spike seven days post exposure to the virus as well. Um, most horses will also develop a dry hacking cough and they may also have some nasal discharge. Initially, the nasal discharge is generally clear. Uh, they may get a secondary bacterial infection and then they can have you know, more of a mucopurulent nasal discharge. Some horses will also get some swollen lymph nodes. Uh, they can also get some muscle pain. They may actually get some swelling in their limbs. And very rarely we'll see horses that actually get what we call myocarditis, uh, so actually inflammation of the heart secondary to this virus. So flu, I would say most commonly, the, the main other differential is gonna be the other respiratory viruses, so things like herpes and adenovirus are gonna be your main uh, differentials. And then, like I said, because so many horses can get a secondary bacterial pneumonia, you know, that that's often a confusing thing for, for some people to figure out which came first. The main treatment is just supportive care. Uh, certainly, again, if you have horses that are having high fevers, you know, giving them an anti-inflammatory to, to help them feel better so that they continue to eat um, and, and not have some of the, the muscle pain and whatnot that they might otherwise have when they're having some of these higher fevers. There are antivirals uh, that can be given for influenza. In general, however, we don't recommend them for horses. They do decrease the severity of clinical signs and the amount of viral shedding, uh, but we worry that the more antivirals that we use, that we're going to start creating viruses that are resistant to them. And because flu viruses can be a much bigger deal again in, in people and whatnot, you know, in general, we don't really advocate doing that. It's, it's really more just the supportive care. You know, fortunately, this is a disease that generally isn't fatal, so it's just nursing them through. And then obviously, if they get some of the uh, more common sequelae of things like bacterial pneumonia, then obviously antibiotics might be indicated if they develop that. So fortunately, again, with influenza, we consider it a high morbidity and that in the right environment, you know, you could have it go through the whole herd and have a lot of sick horses, but it has a very, very low mortality. Uh, so really, very rarely do horses actually die from influenza. If they do, generally it's either going to be uh, foals or horses that are immunocompromised and, and sick for other reasons. Most horses within two to three weeks will be relatively back to normal from this disease. Some of them may have a cough that sometimes can persist actually even for several months. And then again, if they get a secondary bacterial pneumonia, obviously their, their course of disease will run a little bit longer. The really important thing for owners to, to remember is that one of the ways that this virus works is that it uh, kills some of the cells that line the horse's trachea that help them to expel the normal uh, bacteria that they may inhale and it takes three weeks for those cells to come back. So even if the horse looks great after one to two weeks, it's really important to not ask them to exercise for at least three so that they can redevelop that normal lining uh, to their respiratory system so that they don't get some secondary infections. So basic biosecurity, just like many other infectious diseases, is really important. So if you have new horses coming onto the farm, quarantining them for at least two weeks um, before exposing them to the rest of the herd. It's going to help you to prevent uh, introducing new viruses to your herd. 
Uh, fortunately, influenza is a disease that we do have vaccines for, so there are actually several different types of vaccines that are available. Uh, there's a injectable vaccine that we can give series of to horses that is quite effective in, in preventing disease, or at least if horses get disease in general, it's going to be less severe in those animals that have been vaccinated. Um, there's also a, an intranasal vaccine that is available as well. Um, that The benefit of that vaccine is that they're going to develop immunity quite quickly, so in an outbreak type situation. That would be something if, you've, if you have a horse that you know has not been vaccinated, might help prevent that horse from getting as sick. Um, but certainly working with your veterinarian to figure out what is the best vaccine strategy for your particular farm, depending on how many horses you have, you know, the traffic as far as who's coming and going, who's going to horse shows, what the exposure risks are, varies from farm to farm. Uh, but certainly a, a veterinarian could help you decide what's best for your farm.